Okay, the first of the three tools focused on career exploration for humanities and social sciences PhDs is going to be the PhD career training platform. The best way to get to this platform from the career services website is to go to the exploration menu at the top, and that will take you to a range of resources that we gather together focused on the career exploration process. All different sorts of things, including networking tools, my pen which is the pen alumni networking tool imagine phd which will be part two of this series and here's the phd career training platform you can click on this log in with your pinky and password uh, and that will take you to the home page of this online resource now they recently updated this so the navigation might be slightly different if you've used this before but all of these improvements are going to be there to help you with this exploration process and help you navigate through some of the different resources tools workbooks that they have that are going to be helpful for you now the interesting thing about the phd career training platform is that it's focused on all disciplines but also on all career paths that are out there so including you know, the professional paths, the expanded career paths that you can take with a PhD, and the faculty paths that you might be exploring as well as part of your options. The way that they frame this resource is a, is a way to sort of support your career development, uh, to make sure that you are empowered to make some choices and make informed career choices uh, about what you want to do next. And the more information that you have, the more self-reflection that you do about your skills, your interests, your values, the better you'll be able to sort of make decisions and, and have some agency and control over the process of selecting a career path and, and sort of going down that path in a way that supports your professional identity. Now, from this homepage, you'll see a couple of steps along the top menu here. Step one, exploration. Step two, research, that they are encouraging every PhD to go through, whether you are certain about the careers that you are exploring moving forward, be those expanded or academic, uh, or whether you're uncertain, those steps will provide you a solid foundation for understanding the, the skills and the values that you bring, and then making choices about that. Step three, then, is where there is this divide between the faculty career path and the sort of the expanded career path. And so if you're interested specifically in one of those paths, then you'll be able to click on this step three and then get resources specific to that. So if we click on the faculty jobs, you'll see that they have a whole implementation phase on applying for those jobs. Um, you're still evaluating as part of this process when you're ready for that. You're applying or demonstrating your value. And then even here, they talk about pivoting. So, you know, if we look at some of the, the videos and resources that they have on this section, you can see, you know, the nuts and bolts, how to apply for faculty jobs with your materials, the interviewing process, providing a, a whole bunch of resources on that. And then these additional considerations include making a decision about how long you're going to spend applying for academic jobs, especially in fields where there are very limited number of positions or limited number of positions in places that you actually want to work. And so at some point, if you're looking to make a pivot, there are resources to help you built into this faculty job search set of materials. But it's these steps for our session today that we're going to focus on, step one and step two, sort of really focusing on the, the foundation behind understanding yourself and what you might be interested in. And so the process that they talk about, you know, as part of this exploration, discovering, discovering values, interests, skills, researching, researching is sort of looking beyond yourself then at sort of the paths that exist, the implementing, the applying, and then the, the building a career moving forward. So the, the two sort of steps that we'll focus on today will be the discovering and the researching, because that is a key part of the exploration process. So step one is discovery, where you're going to reflect on some of the experiences that you've had and think about the skills uh, that you've leveraged in those experiences. Think about what has energized you about those experiences and think about how those things might be important to you as you explore different career paths that, are, that may be out there. Now, the great thing about the PhD career training platform is it doesn't just dump you in the whole bunch of videos that you're looking uh, you know, on your own and you sort of feel a drift in those resources. They always have for every section a workbook. And the workbook is just a guide to navigate you through the different materials giving you time to reflect on videos that you watch or information that you're gathering so that you can be part of the process, right? You're not just an observer here. You're really a, a participant in this process of discovery. And so the, the workbook is something that is basically just a guided curriculum and, and a guided set of resources and exercises that's going to keep you focused on this experience, right? And so whether it's, you know, the middle of the day or the middle of the night, if you feel like you want to make progress with your career development, go through these workbooks step by step and, and you know, use all the prompts 
to enable you to get the most out of this platform so that as you're reflecting on some of the, the resources, the videos, the workshops, you are part of that discussion because you have thought about what it means to you and your own professional identity. So here are some of the sort of the uh, immediate videos and resources that they're going to point you towards, right? So this idea of upfront, do you have a, a sort of a preference for academic or expanded careers that are out there? Reflecting on your professional identity. Now, this is something that you may not have done a lot of already. As part of the academic journey, sometimes you just get caught up in the, in the river, as it were. And you may not have taken uh, time to reflect on what it is that you actually enjoy about the process. Um, you know, your research can sort of be all consuming, but that self-reflection where you're just really thinking about where you've been the most energized, where you've provided the most value in a role, where your skills have developed the most, that's going to be an important part of your exploration process. And the skills then become critically important, especially beyond academic roles, because in academic roles, you, know, you focus on publications and funding rather than the skills that you're using in each of those settings. But beyond academia, skills become so much more important, important to be able to demonstrate the value that you bring to a future organization, but also in, in terms of where you want to use your skills and what skills you actually want to use day in, day out as uh, part of your professional uh, identity in the workforce. So these resources are a great starting point uh, as you are going through this. What are your most marketable skills? And, and again, as you think about this resource in the workbook, there are going to be exercises that allow you to reflect on this. So within your uh, research and sort of publication process, what have you done? What were your responsibilities? What skills did you actually develop? This will become language then that you can use to describe the value that you bring, whether it's in a resume or in an interview or on your LinkedIn profile, or even just part of your networking. They're also an opportunity to, to use this information as you are reflecting on other people's career paths that are out there. So again, self-reflection is a key part of the process, and I do encourage you to take some time to go through this process. Transferable skills are critically important in fields beyond academia, and not just saying that you have them, but being able to illustrate where you got them and how you use them and how those were beneficial to whatever role that you're in. Within the, the platform, the PhD career training platform, there's also a, a spreadsheet that you can leverage as you are sort of creating an inventory of your skills. Again, to remind yourself where you've done these things, because skills are not necessarily a thing that you talk to your academic advisor a lot about your, you know, anyone that you're working with a faculty member, you may not have a lot of discussions about these transferable skills. And maybe you even forgot that you have a lot of these skills, but you do. And it is important to sort of create this inventory so that you have a, a very clear perspective of the range of skills that you bring, how you use them, where you use them, what impact that they had when you did use them. My colleague Alison in part two is going to be talking about Imagine PhD as a great way to do some self-assessments of skills, interests, and values. And in this platform, when it first started, they sort of took stock of how users of the platform, primarily PhD students and postdocs, how they reflected on what skills that they had, you know, the ones that they, they thought they were really great at, and the skills that they've said that they, they weren't so great at or weren't so confident in. And some of the skills that were identified at the, the you know, bottom of the list in terms of how confident that the users were in those skills included dealing with conflict and navigating the publication process, right? Now, hopefully that the navigating the publication process is something that you can talk to your uh, advisor about in terms of gaining insight. But things like dealing with conflict, you know, they're not really taught, they're not really part of the curriculum, but they are critically important in any work field. And so I just wanna take a, a, a quick sort of detour as it were and talk about some other resources that we have that can help address you know, some, some of these skill deficits that you might feel that you have, or at least give you resources so that you can continue to build skills that are gonna be helpful. Now, one of the resources that Penn as an institution subscribes to is the NCFDD, or formerly the National Center for Faculty Development and Diversity. This is, a, again, another online tool with a, a, a bunch of resources that support uh, students and postdocs and, and faculty as part of their uh, career development. Within this platform, they have the dissertation success training modules. One of those modules is on managing conflict, right? So possibly something that is somewhat frequent in this field. And so having the skills necessary to deal with that can be really important. One of the other resources that they have within that platform is how to engage in healthy conflict, right? So knowing that conflict is something that can happen, how do you make that part of your skill toolkit in terms of addressing that? 
not all conflict necessarily has to be sort of negative conflict in, in the context of work environments. And so healthy conflict sometimes is just disagreements or different perspectives. How do you manage uh, those types of situations? In terms of the publication process, they also have this set of resources in the hidden handbook, one focused on promoting your publications, revising and submitting your publications, right? So just resources that you can leverage here to feel more confident in these skills, in this case related to the world of academia, but also uh, can have a, a applicability beyond that as well. Another resource we have offered through the Vice Provost for Research is uh, Nature Masterclasses. And again, this is slightly... Um, more focused on STEM fields, but can be, still be useful as you're thinking about building broader skill sets. So this is an online set of resources that you can leverage for free because the Office of the Vice Provost of Research has subscribed to this. Uh, and as part of these on-demand courses, you might find useful information that you can leverage as part of your skill development. Building a, a researcher profile, an online profile, writing a paper, grant writing, again, another skill set that people said that they were looking for more information on. So, you know, taking advantage of those uh, resources beyond the platform that I'm talking about today is also going to be helpful for you. Going back to the PhD career training platform then, so we're talking about the experiences that energize you. When you get to use skills that come naturally to you, that you enjoy, you're in an environment that will support your professional growth and your, and your career development. So think about your interests and your values, because those are part of what energize you too. In addition to using skills that you want to use, things that align with your interests and align with your values are always going to be important. So reflecting on these within the PhD career training platform is a great use of time as you are thinking about possible paths that are out there. Step two, then, as part of this process is research. So we, we looked at discovery, step one. Step two is research. This is going to be a really great opportunity, then, to explore some of the career paths that might be out there. So some of the, the immediate videos that they have focused on the research stage, trying to um, help you explore how to research fields that are out there, how to gather enough evidence to make an informed decision, how to understand the differences between you know, hiring in the academic world versus hiring in the expanded career world, all of these things provide information that are going to be helpful to you as you're navigating your path and your timelines for looking for careers that support your professional growth. Now, the way that they define some of these research steps include conducting informational interviews with PhDs who share your background, right? So this is a networking component. Informational interviews are a type of networking where you're sort of doing one-on-one -on -one conversations with people about the paths that they've taken, about the skills that they use, about the knowledge that they've gained along the way, about the best practices that they would uh, suggest, about the mistakes that they would recommend avoiding that they may have made along the way, right? These informational interviews can become so critical as part of your exploration phase, because they really give you perspectives. There's probably not a lot of time for you to go out there and get internships in different fields. And so living through the experiences of other people who have those experiences is going to save you a lot of time, but also give you really great information that you can leverage as you are thinking about your own career next steps. Now, we're not going to talk about sort of some of the networking platforms in this session today, like LinkedIn or MyPen, even though those are the ways that you can find people, because I want to focus on what this platform, the PhD career training platform offers. And one of the things that they provide that's going to be so helpful for you is this interview library, basically a library of conversations with PhDs from different institutions out there in the world doing things that you might be interested in learning more about. So this is networking that has been done for you. Uh, it's a good precursor to your own networking. It's a good way of seeing how networking is done so that when you do it, you're asking the right types of questions. But this is all networking that you get to watch like a fly on the wall and benefit from uh, without having to actually engage with people, which, as I said, for some of you, you might be excited to have networking engagements with people. For others like me with more introverted tendencies, that might be something they're a little bit more hesitant about. But when you see the sort of the nature of these conversations, you can see that it is easy to do and it does provide you with really great information that you can leverage. So within this video library, we have 124 videos with PhDs across disciplines 
out there in a variety of different career fields that you can explore. So as you begin to identify fields of interest to you, you can sit in on some of these online conversations and learn from these people. So let's say you're interested in communications and content creation, right? So there's 22 PhDs in this sort of category. Uh, we're going to pick on Catherine here with a PhD in English language and literature. First thing I'm going to do is, you know, go to the video itself. There's 22 minutes of conversation here. Catherine sharing her thoughts and perspectives on the journey that she's taken, on the role that she has. This LinkedIn icon here takes you to her profile. And it's always a good idea to check on that because when this video was recorded, she was a instructional designer for Divisions Maintenance Group. But if I jump over to her LinkedIn profile, I see now she is... Uh, working at Saxby's in uh, experiential learning. And I can sort of scroll down to her experience and now find that she's an associate director of experiential learning and impact. So similar type of role, but in a different organization, which means that she herself is experiencing career growth and career development, you know, which is great to sort of put into context when you hear her interview. It's also something that, you know, if you enjoy hearing about her experience and maybe you would uh, want to connect with her, maybe you want to learn about the Saxby's role, you can reach out to her on LinkedIn and say, hey, I saw your video on the PhD career training platform. That was so helpful to me. I see now that you're in this new role. You know, would you be open to having you know, a one-on-one -on -one discussion about how you got there, what's different about it, what you like about it, you know, whatever questions that you have about that career journey that she's been on. Within the PhD career training platform, they also provide a sort of some suggested questions that you can ponder as you watch the video. So again, encouraging you not just to watch and have that information evaporate, but to sort of look at that video and then reflect on it and use the workbook to sort of jot things down and, and you know, add to your own knowledge and your own networking database the information that you might have gleaned from that discussion. So again, not just a casual observer, but a participant in this process. Let's think about management and consulting as a category now. So 31 people, again, across disciplines. If we were to click on Leah's profile here, so Leah has a PhD in clinical psychology, sort of in the social sciences, spanning the social sciences and STEM fields. It says here that this interview was done when she's a strategy consultant for ZS Consulting. If I click on her LinkedIn profile, I see that now she's a senior UX researcher at Instagram, right? So again, a range of a professional growth from her perspective. She was a postdoc, was a consultant, now is a senior user experience research. So in the arts and humanities, just as a subset of, of academic disciplines, 42 uh, interviews across this span of different career fields. That will do for today in terms of the PhD career training platform. We've touched on the discovery and the research steps that are built into this platform. We've looked at the, the career video library, which comes along with this workbook that you can always be leveraging as you're sort of going through this process. The workbooks provide structure to this platform so that you're never lost or never adrift. We encourage you to use this. Find us at Career Services, or happy to talk about the progress that you're making, any questions that you have. But this is part one. Part two is going to be focused on Imagine PhD. Part three on the Intersect Job Simulations. I hope you enjoy these videos.